So this past weekend, the Kansas City Chiefs won their third Super Bowl in the last five years, and that has left a lot of Bills fans wondering the same question. When is it finally going to be our turn? When are the Bills finally going to hoist the Lombardi Trophy? And with that comes the infamous question, is the Bills window closing? And I'm here to say that the window is not closing because anytime that you have that guy as your quarterback, your window is going to be open. But I think it's important with how we say that because just because you have Josh Allen under center does not mean that the window is going to be wide open. So the way I see it is the Bills essentially have two windows, one for the front half of Josh Allen's career and then one for the back half. And if you can believe this, we're going into year number seven for Josh Allen in 2024. And that is where I believe it it is the bookend for window number one. And then 2025 starts window number two. Because I think if you can get seven years out of Josh Allen, he came into the league as a 21-year-old rookie. That'll take him through the age 28 season. And then window number two is when he's going to be 29 to 35 years old. And then after 35, based on how he plays and the amount of hits that he takes, we'll be lucky for any other years that we'll be able to get out of Josh Allen. I mean, I think that he will be able to continue playing past 35, but we've seen what's happened to Cam Newton, and I don't want to get too excited and think that Josh Allen's going to be Josh Allen until he's 40 years old. We have to be realistic. So I think you have two windows lasting 14 years total, and then anything we get after that is an exception. So let me show you a quick representation of how I envision this, and then I will show you in football terms. So this is the 2024 Buffalo Bills. You can see the window on the left getting ready to be closed. The homeowners realize that it is a chilly spring day, and they're saying, you know what, it's a little bit breezy. Let's just close this window. And then you look at window number two here, and the window on the right is opening up, allowing that sunshine to come in. So that is the 2025 Buffalo Bills. That is the back half of Josh Allen's career right there. And oddly enough, it is bright and sunny. So I hope that is a good omen. So let's get into some of the ages of these Bills right now, the core group of players that we've grown to love so much. And then we'll start to look at the free agency side and the contracts and some of the terms that come with them. So right off the top, Von Miller is going to be 35 this season. Micah Hyde is going to be 33. Jordan Poyer is going to be 33. Daquan Jones is going to be 32. Mitch Morse is going to be 32. Stephon Diggs turns 31 in November. And then if you can believe this, Deion Dawkins and Matt Milano are already going to be 30 years old when the season kicks off. And taking it one step further, Trey White is going to be 29. And we know with his injury history that that is not the best form of a 29-year-old. So now let's take a look at some of the free agents here. So as you can see, this list is pretty extensive. A total of 22 unrestricted free agents for the Bills. And I think the height of this comes on the defensive line. As you can see, defensive end Leonard Floyd, A.J. Epinesa, Shaq Lawson, Daquan Jones, Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, Puna Ford, and Linval Joseph at defensive tackle. So eight defensive linemen who are going to be needing a new contract within the next few weeks here. Now, the Bills have no restricted free agents, and there is an exclusive rights free agent to Quentin Morris, but he just needs to get tendered and he will most likely be back. But again, you can see how much work Brandon Bean has ahead of him here as we approach the new league year. Now, that being said, there are a lot of guys who are up for contract extensions as well between Deion Dawkins, Russell Douglas, and Taron Johnson. Now, you could look at that and say, well, that's more for in terms of this segment right here, window number two. You know, we don't have to worry about that yet, but the bills are over $50 million in cap space right now. So just to get back to the floor, they have a lot of work to do. So that's why you might want to start thinking about now and the future by extending some of these players who I just mentioned. And as I've already mentioned with Trey White, that is a situation that we'll have to monitor because what does Brandon Bean decide to do with Trey White and his contract based on his injuries? Do you release him, try to sign him back on a fresh contract? Do you try to restructure it? Do you just outright cut him? I think a lot of Bills fans would hate to see Trey White go because he's meant so much to this organization. But again, I mean, there are a lot of questions that are going into this offseason here. But now that we put it into football terms here, you can see how this window is closing for the Bills. But that doesn't mean that all these players are going to be either cut or retiring soon. 
with the exception of Micah Hyde, Von Miller, and eventually Jordan Poyer, a lot of these guys still have some good football days ahead of them, but it's just natural that after you hit age 30, your body is not going to be in its prime like it was five or six years ago. And I think that the wide receiver room is a perfect microcosm of what we're dealing with here because the Bills are in desperate need to find a wide receiver too. And that is a wide receiver two who can transition into a wide receiver one. Because right now, Stefan Diggs, Khalil Shakir, Deontay Hardy, and Justin Shorter are the only ones under contract. Andy Isabel and KJ Hamler too, if you want them. But the way I see it is the Bills are going to need a wide receiver two, wide receiver four, and a wide receiver six. So I think it is so important that Brandon Bean drafts one for the first time in his tenure, by the way. Brandon Bean has never selected a wide receiver before day three since becoming the general manager of the Buffalo Bills. So I think that this is a year that he has to break that and you have to find that future wide receiver. Because to my point, Stephon Diggs still has a lot of good football ahead of him. But as you are transitioning from window one to window two, you need to find a wide receiver two who can eventually transition to wide receiver one. And at the height of this, oddly enough, for as much as we've been talking about contracts and contract extensions, I think is Sean McDermott. Because McDermott was extended last year in the offseason, and now he is under contract through the 2027 season. And I remember saying last June when it happened that if the Bills continue to fumble in the playoffs, and if they can't get out of the divisional round specifically, then it might be time to look for a new head coach. Because I started to read the tea leaves, and I started to see the contracts and the ages and the terms. And I was like, you know what? It's starting to come together for me. I think the Bills have two windows here, one for the front half of Allen's career, one for the back half. And if this runs parallel with each other, you might want to get a new head coach for the back half of Allen's career. You might say, all right, McDermott, you've had seven or eight years with Josh Allen and with this specific core of players in their prime. Now we need to get a new coach to lead Josh Allen in the back half of his career with a new core of players. Maybe you still have some leftover pieces like Deion Dawkins, Milano. We'll see what happens with Stefan Diggs. But if the Bills drop another playoff game next year, there are going to be a lot of questions about Sean McDermott's future here. So I want to hear from you guys. Do you agree with my assessment of the Bills window? And do you agree that this could run parallel with Sean McDermott? And even though he's under contract, the Bills might have to think about making another coaching move if they want to succeed and finally raise that Lombardi trophy. Or do you think McDermott is a guy and that we're just going to have to keep working through this? And as long as you have Josh Allen, that window is always open and it's just up to Brandon Bean to assemble the roster. So comment below, make sure you subscribe to Built in Buffalo, follow us on all of our social media pages, and give me a follow at Kevin underscore Syracuse, and uh, can't wait to see what we have to say.